Good morning. I have made the executive decision not to talk on these types of vlogs until I am not miserable and I've had my coffee. But basically what I've been wanting to do every morning is just to have a whole quiet routine until I am ready to get into things. So what I typically like doing is reading my Bible and doing the rosary and then I come over here, I make up, I make my breakfast, which a lot of you, I bet you thought that I was gonna make oats today, but I switched it up, switched it up on you. I made some eggs and toast with cream cheese and honey. It's either oats or that breakfast, nothing else. Until I find something else, I, those are my go-tos for sure. This entire routine, I try my best not to go on my phone before I finish. I especially don't go on my phone until after I finish my prayer because I just, in my head, I just think that there's priorities and the priority is not necessarily checking my, fo my phone first thing. It is giving my thanks to God and doing the rosary, same prayer, reading the Bible, and then coming over here. And that's when I'll, I'll look at my phone, but this morning, and I kind of want to do this every single morning, just make my breakfast, have my coffee, write in my journal for the day and do all of that before going on my phone. And I actually, once I was finished breakfast, I finished writing. I went on my phone to do the final edits for today's videos that I'm uploading on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube Shorts. And I just find this routine is way better. I used to be one of those people, which up until recently, I was one of those people. So I am, I recently was one of those people where I would wake up, say my prayer, come over here, and while I'm making breakfast, drinking my greens and whatever, like even while I was doing the journal, I would be on TikTok just scrolling. And that I feel is so unhealthy for my brain. I feel like it makes me overstimulated where I can't focus on one thing at once. I can't give my full attention to one thing at once. I have to be distracted in some sort of way in order to get that thing done. And I don't like that sense of dependency. So that is changing up. And I'm grateful that we are here making this video because it kind of put things into perspective where sometimes you don't want to show that side on camera because you're just like, oh, you need to be this perfect person who never scrolls on TikTok, doesn't waste their time like that. And I did not want to show that on camera. So we're switching that up. The fact that I didn't want to show that on camera means a lot. So we're switching that up. And from now on, every single morning is going to be dedicated to quietness, silence, and devoting my time and energy to one task at a time instead of using other factors to distract me. But anyways, that is my spiel of the day. We're gonna get started with the actual things going on now. I have a bunch of dishes in the sink right now. So I'm gonna clean up and then we're gonna get ready for the gym. I'm really not looking forward to the gym today because it is glutes and hamstring day. Those types of days just, they don't get me going. After the workout, I feel great. But before the workout, it's like I have to drag myself there. But we have to make sure that we are grateful. We're grateful. It's not we have to work out, it's we get to work out. And that is a mindset that I need to put in my brain every single day. So let's clean up and we'll get ready for the gym. left um, fake ones I have real ones I for the longest time have been getting eyelash extensions and I just wanted to take a little break which honestly by the next YouTube video I'm going to be having eyelashes because I'm going on a trip but I thought before then let's give my eyelashes my real ones a little bit of a break a little bit of a hiatus a vacation from eyelash extensions i think i've been getting them for roughly like two years is it two years and it was one of those things where i was like it's only gonna be a summer thing and then it carried over into the winter because it was like what about the holidays what about this what about that right now i want to say i have some eyelashes left but they're 
It's very different from the full look that I'm used to. I wish it was more of a hiatus, but after I'm done with all these trips, I think I'm gonna take another break, but this time longer than a week. My last eyelash appointment was probably three weeks ago, and I'm surprised that I still have these on, because usually after two weeks, they're done so. But uh, that's okay, that's fine. I kind of wish these guys, the remaining few would fall off so I can just, you know that feeling where you can just wash your face like this and like no care in the world? I want to feel like that again. I haven't felt like that in forever. And I haven't been able to put my head down on a pillow face first in so long. So I just want to experience that again. And I'm kind of debating just ripping these guys off, but I don't want to because I, want my natural eyelashes to be okay. We're just gonna wait it out. And then come end of March, hold me to it. If I'm not taking a height, I feel like I, I'm just gonna bite myself in the but right now by saying this, but if I do not take a hiatus from my eyelash extensions, come end of March, which is when all my trips should be over, you can come for me, okay? I give you permission to call me out for it and be like, what happened to your natural eyelashes, Deanna? Okay, now that I've talked my way into this bun, we're gonna head to the gym. Honestly, it's one of those gym days where I just don't want to even dress up. So I'm just gonna switch out my Calvin Klein bra for my sports bra and then just wear this, this outfit. No judgment here. Sometimes it's just one of those days. My head is pounding. Okay. We're gonna get through this. I did three sets already and now we're on my final set. We're gonna aim for 10 reps and we're gonna pause at the top. We're gonna do hip thrust, pause, and then extend down and continue for 10 reps. And then we move on to split squats. I wish I could say it would get better from here, but split squats is like rock bottom. Let's go. One, eight, nine. Ow, split squats it is. Okay, so things have definitely taken a 180 because I'm feeling a lot stronger. My headache went away a little bit. It's kind of in the background, but we're working with it. I'm now on my fourth set of split squats and I grabbed 45s. What the frick are we today? We're gonna push and just get this done with so that I can enjoy the rest of my workout. You know those people that are just like finishing hip thrusts or finishing split squats and then feeling like you can enjoy the rest of your workout? That's how I feel right now. So let's just get it done so we can enjoy. Oh, okay. Let's aim for 12, 12 reps, let's go. You got this, come on. One more, come on. Twelve. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, that's crazy. I definitely need a rest in between of these two legs. So let's take it. Okay, let's finish off. Let's go. One, two, done. Eleven. Fudge. My dentist, when she gave me the TMJ assessment, told me to stop clenching. And every single set, I have to clench. I like think about it, I clench, and then I'm like, oh, stop but then I keep doing it. There's no stopping me. Okay, single RDLs. Okay, I did three sets of single RDLs. We're gonna do our last one. And I'm doing 45 dumbbells. At this moment, I really wish I brought my wrist straps. I forgot them at home. And I know some of you are probably gonna be like, 45 pounds, you can definitely hold on to that. Yeah, but my wrists, my tiny wrists, they can't handle it. Okay, we're gonna do our last set. And I try to do them back to back without fainting. So let's do it. Oh 
One, two, two more. Eleven and twelve. Okay, other leg. One, two, ten, two more. Okay, time for RDLs. So we're finishing off with hyper extensions and regular RDLs. And I'm doing my last set and I'm making this a super set because I have a Zoom meeting in 30 minutes. So I have to hurry up. Let's finish it up. I might disappear in this sweater for a second. One, 11, and 12. Last, last set of RDLs and of this workout. Okay, let's do this. One, nine, come on, three more. Okay, we're done, let's go. Let's go home. Okay, just got back from the gym. I have like 15 to 20 minutes until this meeting and I currently look like this, which is not the most presentable. So let me just change my top. This is like prime Zoom meeting era during 2020 where the only thing you have to change is the top portion since they'll never see the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's see what I have. Okay, this is what we're working with right now. I feel like it's a little bit showy, but I also have nothing to show, so it'll be good to go. We're currently making a coffee very quickly. I have nine minutes. I'm gonna make a latte very quick. I already made my long espresso, and now I'm gonna fill up my cup with milk. Oh my goodness, I almost dropped all the milk. Okay, that's not great. I have been trying very hard to get a latte right, or at least try to get the latte art. Oh, I poured way too much milk. Basically, I've been trying to really get latte art down. Now, don't judge because I, I know that this is not gonna be the best. Also, I'm adding coffee syrup. You know those TikToks where, where people are rushing to do things? I feel like that, and I should have started filming this sooner, but I legitimately have eight minutes. Like, I'm not even playing with you right now but um we're gonna try our best you guys have said that the percentage of milk matters that the way that you froth matters and i think that i got the milk and i got the froth down but it's just the art part that is really really messing with me i gotta keep my hand still i used to shake too much i would like shake the the frother up and down but no bueno that is not good you gotta keep it still oh i'm shaking okay i noticed that if i just keep it still it creates more of a thick milk instead of bubbles. Like it, I was trapping too much, whoa. I was trapping too much air when I would shake it up and down, but I think I've mastered the art of frothing. I may have spoken way too soon. No, I think it's good. But really, I'm, I, I've heard that you have to keep your hand on the frother cup if it's, if it's too, um, like you have to touch the temperature throughout. I'm so stressed and I feel like I'm thinking a mile a minute. But basically, I feel, I've heard that you have to touch the bottom or something around the frother. And once it gets too hot to touch, that's like the perfect temperature of your milk. So I'm gonna stop now. Thank you very much. There's some bubbles. I really wanna show you this. So if any of you guys are baristas or, or more trained than I am, 100% any of you guys are trained more than I am because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But if any of you know what you're doing in this area of expertise, please let me know. So I've. I got the milk done. I'm trying to get rid of the bubbles and I've heard that smacking down the thing, the frother really helps to do that. Now, watch watch out for this technique. So you go like that and then, oh, wait, 
Wait, how do I, how do I push it? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. But all I know is that you create a line. Oh, I messed up again. I got four minutes. <laughs> We did it, guys. Look how beautiful that is. I can't tell if you guys get annoyed by these daily latte posts, but they bring me joy. So I'm gonna keep sharing them and I'm sorry. Just, I usually post them around three or four o'clock cause that's when I have my cappuccinos. So if you guys get annoyed, avoid my Instagram from 3 to 4 p.m. I stressed for nothing because the person just texted me saying that they're in another meeting and they're just gonna be a couple minutes late. Hi, how are you? Okay, now that we're all done, I'm gonna take a shower, a much needed shower, because it's been some time since I've been to the gym already and I need a freaking shower. And then I'll do some laundry and have some lunch because I'm freaking hungry and then get to work. Okay, so I just finished showering and the laundry is currently in there. There's 21 minutes left. We'll see if that's a freaking lie. I just made a burrito bowl, which the recipe is on my Instagram if you want to go check. It's so freaking good. Look at that. Ah. Oh, I thought I dropped some. But yeah, this has been my go-to lunch lately. It's so good and it's so easy to make. So if you do want to check it out, go check out my Instagram. It's over there. My laundry machine is so freaking loud. I also need to catch up on my water for today. I'm not doing well, so I gotta really catch up. Okay, so I've been meaning to tell you guys because I always get this question a lot, especially with, you know, all the slick back buns and whatnot. I will wash my hair, like shampoo it and condition it one to two times a week. And then when it comes to those days where I, it's not a hair wash day and I still have gel in my hair, I will literally just wash it out with water in the uh, shower, but sometimes I will put some conditioner on the tips of my hair because I don't know, I don't know why, but sometimes it just doesn't feel right if I only rinse it with water, especially if it's been a couple days like that. I don't know what it is, call me a little bit crazy, but this ain't no store-bought pesto. And speaking on the topic of crazy, what I've been doing lately, and some of you might judge me for this because it's not the greatest, but I have been doing it lately. Basically, Every two weeks, I make this batch of rosemary water, and I know that helps a ton with hair growth, especially because I wear so many slick back buns, and I know that they are terrible for your hair, hair follicles because they, they pull on them, and then they can lead to alopecia. I try to limit the slick back buns to like three or four days a week. Some days I go to the gym with just like my freaking curly hair, and I've been trying to find a new routine that doesn't involve the slick back bun. I haven't found one that I like, but I did order some headbands. Whoa. I did order some headbands that I hope are not too compressive so that they don't do the same thing as my bun, but they still keep my hair away. I hate the feeling of hair just in my face while I work out. So I've been trying to find a way and I'll keep you guys updated, but for now we're choosing to limit the slick bun. I wanna to try to limit it back to like two or three days a week, which are usually the days that I film workouts. So I'm trying to limit it to that. And then the rest of the days of the week, I'm just gonna let my hair do its thing. Hopefully the headband is gonna work, but we'll keep you guys updated. Anyways, back to the rosemary water. I've been making rosemary water every two weeks because I think that's how long it usually lasts. And I use, I spray rosemary water onto my hair after every shower, um, especially along the hairline because since I slick back, it's like pulling from that part. So I've been putting it a lot here as well as here because 
my hairline is not the best on the side. I find that that's where my finer hairs are. So I, I've been I've been applying rosemary water there, here, and at the back of my head because I have I have a colic. Is it a colic that I always brush over? But I just want to I don't know. I add rosemary water to it. It can't do no harm. The problem is I used I used rosemary oil for a little while and there was a problem. There was an, an intense problem with rosemary oil. I know it really depends on who it is and what your hair type is. Personally, the rosemary oil did not do me justice. And don't let me scare you into not using rosemary oil because if it if it works for you, that's that's good. But if if you experience the same thing as me, I had intense hair fallout and I know that it's normal for you to experience fallout for like the first couple weeks, but it kept going and it was not pretty. And I was losing so much hair, especially in the shower. And it was just so upsetting to me. So I completely stopped using it. I was like, the benefits are not doing me justice. Like I wish I had my hair back then before I started using it. Cause right now it's so thin. And it took us a long time to get to where we are. It's grown back quite a bit, but now with all the slick buns, I don't want to regress from that improvement. So we're doing the rosemary water. I think the thing with the oil is it really depends on the texture or the type of your scalp. Again, as with any other video, please don't take my advice. Whatever I say, please always do your research. If it involves anything other than fitness, please do your research and Please just like, don't take my word for things that I don't know about. Like, I think the last video I said this was on the period video. I had no idea about period stuff, but I was just going off of what I thought and my experience, which is what I'm doing right now. So I think that the oil from the rosemary, the rosemary oil, it only works on certain scalp types. And I believe that it was clogging my pores and it was not allowing hair growth to occur. I don't know exactly why it. I was shedding a lot, but it scared me, so I stopped using it. And now rosemary water, since it's just water and it's, it's a natural plant, like I don't have a fear of using that. And it's been working really well. Like I've noticed a lot of baby hairs growing back and my hair is getting a little bit thicker. I just gotta keep to it. The only annoying part is that it only lasts two, week in, two weeks into in the fridge, so. I just gonna make it every two weeks and buy rosemary every two weeks, which is a little annoying because rosemary in Canada costs a lot. It's like $5 a pack, I think. And it's like a small pack too. But yeah, that's where we are in terms of hair talk. I'll keep you updated on the new hairstyles once I officially find one and or the progress of this rosemary water. Right now, I have to sign on to my computer, finish a, a bunch of things. I have to answer a bunch of emails and I have to figure out some exciting things that are coming your way. So I'm really excited about that. And I also am working on editing this week's YouTube video, which is last week's for you. So I just gotta finish all of that. I usually procrastinate the editing of my YouTube video because I'm so, oh, it's, it's kind of annoying because I like listening to music, but I can't listen to music and listen to myself and edit those segments out with music on. So it's just quiet and me listening to my voice nonstop. And I'm just not down for that, but we got to get it done and um, we'll see how it goes. This, this week is lower body form tips and I hope that th that helps a ton of you because I know a lot of you ask questions about split squats, reverse lunges. Actually, I didn't do split squats. I should have done split squats. Apologies, I totally missed out on split squats. How could I do that? I did reverse lunges instead of split squats. Anyways, split, there will definitely be more videos on form tips for lower body, so I'll include split squats in the next one. But I included squats, reverse lunges, RDLs, and hip thrusts and cast glute bridges. So I hope it really helps you out, but I gotta get I gotta get going on this YouTube video because I got a busy weekend coming up and there's no time to edit this, so I gotta get it done.
my brain feels fried. I just finished editing the YouTube video. I'm gonna do some final touches tomorrow and it is currently 7.52. The time, the day just went by. I was going at that YouTube video for so long and I finally finished it, which I'm happy I did. I had some dinner. I'm so proud because usually YouTube video editing, I'm like continuing to do it throughout the week and then it really gets strung along until the day before I have to post and I'm like stressing the night before and I can't really enjoy my weekend. But this week I felt the pressure to just get it done so i pushed through all of it today and i spent i want to say like three to four hours on that laptop just going at the editing i had some dinner and now what i'm gonna do is i usually have if you guys keep up with my instagram stories i do weekly check-ins and usually that's on like a wednesday or a thursday um so we're we're gonna answer your check-ins because i posted one after the gym you can't even see because it's too bleached after my workout i posted a check-in time little q a section a little discussion forum box on the instagram on my instagram story and now i'm gonna get back to you guys um there were a lot of you that replied to this so let's select like five i like to keep it to five because i want to spend the rest of my night kind of off my phone and just decompressing so you can just take a breather and relax oh whoa someone someone said been watching your youtube while on the treadmill thank you for getting me through i think i'm gonna end it there because i did quite a few and now i'm ready to wind down read some of my book and make some tea. I feel like an old grandma, like, you know? It's, uh, we don't go out much, okay? We're hermit crabs over here. For today, we are very much a hermit crab, but we also got a lot of things done. Anything counts. All right, let's make some tea and enjoy some grandma, grandma Ian. Grandma Ian, that's a word now. <sighs> I just finished reading and now I am literally about to fall asleep but i wanted some tea i'm using some david's tea i kind of like when i have to put leaves or something into the strainer to create the tea i feel it's like it's more it's more fun that way but also that's more authentic tea i could be totally wrong by saying that but i i stand by it okay pour in some water This is so, it's very true to its its flavor. This is called Forever Nuts and it literally, well, to be fair, what I'm seeing right now are a bunch of almonds and walnuts and everything inside this little container. So I hope it actually tastes like nuts, but it does. It tastes really, really good. And look how pretty that color is. Oh, it's a pair with my tea. I'm also gonna have some of my nonna's crostata. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but it's basically this little pastry, I would say. I don't really know how to describe it. It's like a cookie. It's not even like a cookie, but that's the best way I can really describe it. It's like a cookie, but there's jam on it, and every part of this is homemade, so you know it's, you know it's top tier. So thank you, nonna. Every single time, Whenever she makes crostata, which is like her specialty, I would say, that and cream puffs. She always makes, we call them beignets, but she makes those two. I would say that is her specialty. She also used to make this ice cream, ice cream cake back in the day. And I definitely took it for granted because as a kid, I wasn't really a fan of it. But looking back, that tasted real good. But anyways off topic. She always makes a crostata and every single time she makes it, the recipe makes two. So she usually gives me the second one. And um, if I don't get it, I get a little bit upset because sometimes my mom tries to give it away to someone. I'm like, hey, no one's gonna appreciate it as much as her grandchild, okay? Okay, I'm gonna watch a little bit of, what is that show called? I finished Firefly Lane and now I'm just watching whatever show pops up on Netflix, which is unfortunate because I'm not really a fan of the one. I think it's called Living with the, with the Walter Boys. 
I'm not really a fan because it's kind of like a teenage thing and I am fully 24 years old. I have no business watching this teenage drama, okay? But yet I, there's nothing interesting on that I, what am I trying to say? I can't even talk because I'm so tired. There's nothing interesting that I've yet to find. There's nothing interesting that I have found yet. So we'll wait and we'll see what comes around. If anyone has any suggestions, nothing scary, please. Just something kind of wholesome, like Firefly Lane, loved it. Loved it, I wish I could rewatch it again for the first time. Unfortunately, that is not possible. I might actually rewatch it because it was just really, really good, really well done. But anything like that, please suggest something to me because I need a new show. I can't be on this teen drama. It's just not, it's not it for me. Okay, well, shoot, I almost didn't say goodbye. Thank you for coming along this day with me. Um, Sorry if it was a little bit boring for you, but that is the life of Deanna. There's not much to it. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next because I do take a lot of your suggestions. A lot of the videos that I have posted are suggestions from you guys. So please make sure to let me know what you want to see in the comments section down below. But until the next video, I will see you later. Love you. Bye.